Hello, it's time for this month's collection pickups video. Normally I pretty much focus on Java related items that I've added to my collection, but this month I wasn't even sure if I was going to make a video because I have not really been able to find that much to add to the collection when it comes to Java or Star Wars, but it occurred to me that I did get some things that probably a lot of you might be interested in seeing. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is start out with a couple Java related items that I did get, and then move on to some other items that uh, you may or may not be interested in. If you're not interested, just stop watching right there. That's fine. Don't forget to like the video, of course, at that point. But, uh, you know, I figure everyone is happy this way. Um, so the first item I have here is a pin from Nerd Matters. This is the Uncle Gangster pin, which is, of course, uh, for Zero the Hut from the Clone Wars. And one thing, I mean, of course, I'm interested in basically any hut, but uh, one thing that kind of interested me in this is that there's very, very little Zero the Hut uh, merchandise out there. Of course, Zero is Jabba's uncle, kind of, uh, well, flamboyant character, shall we say. Has all these tattoos and purple and wears, like, earrings and stuff. <laughs> jewelry, tail jewelry. Um... He's kind of a ridiculous character in some sense, but also very memorable, for sure. And uh, it's a little strange that they never made a, an actual figure of him. I do have a little bit, which I'm going to show you right now, of uh, Zero Merchandise. I can show you my entire collection in just a couple minutes. But anyway, uh, this one recently just came out. It's still available, as far as I know. It is uh, a large metal pin, quite nicely done. I like the colors and the design here. So, uh, pretty cool to have that. I'll put the link for that in the video description. The other, well, the, really the only thing that you could call a figure was this Fighter Pods figure that was made probably like 10 or 11 years ago. Uh, you may not even remember the Fighter Pods line at this point, but it was a line of these little sort of uh, squinky-like rubbery figures. This is actually a repaint of the Jabba the Hutt figure, so the, the actual figure itself is exactly the same, but they've repainted it to look like Zero with all these tattoos and whatnot on him. Actually, it's a really good job for a repaint, but uh, this is it in terms of <laughs> Zero uh, figures, I'm afraid. I did also have a marble. This is a marb, I believe they called them, uh, for the, the Clone Wars. So it comes on a little chrome stand like this. It's got zero, if you can see inside there. It says uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, zero the hut. And on the other side, it's just got some Clone Wars logo there with some kind of a holographic effect. It's, it's a cool looking marble. Um, plastic, though. Yep. And then, uh, well, that's pretty much it, actually. I do have one more item that I picked up long time ago. This is a, uh, a resin figure that somebody made of Zero. I got it, I think, probably on Etsy or something like that. Uh, honestly, I don't like it very much. It's not, not very well sculpted. I uh, didn't realize, you know, exactly what it looked like when I, when I got it, but, uh, yeah, not the, not the best, I will say that. But, you know, at least they're trying to fill that gap for Zero the Hut figures, which is uh, something I can definitely uh, get behind. I, I think I have seen some people, I've even seen some people like repaint the vintage Jabba to look like Zero and some of the other Jabba figures, but it's always a little bit difficult because he's so intricate in terms of his paint job and whatnot. Did I forget anything in terms of Zero merchandise? I'd be interested to know if you know of anything that I don't have. Next up I have a bootleg figure that I got from Delicious Again Peter, who is a UK-based creator of uh, sort of art toys and bootlegs. I uh, actually have gotten something from him in the past I introduced on the channel before. This is the uh, Run the Java figure that he made. Uh, using my scan of the unlicensed vintage uh, ceramic Java, uh, which I've 
made a few videos about in the past, and uh, he was nice enough to send this to me, uh, kind of, uh, you know, for allowing him to, to use my design there. But uh, yeah, definitely a cool guy. He's made a lot of uh, interesting figures in the past. This one is a kind of a, a one-off, I guess, that he made. He, I think, uh, probably printed off the Desert Octopus scan of Jabba, uh, but scaled it down to about two-thirds the size of the actual vintage Jabba, so you can see, you know, a fair difference in size there. And then he has made several different versions of it, uh, several of them in clear resin with things suspended in them like peanut M&Ms or <laughs> pieces of action figures and stuff inside. It's pretty cool stuff. I just like the way this green looked. It's kind of a fluorescent green with a black wash on it, but it's pretty distinctive looking. Uh, it's made out of solid resin, and if you look on the bottom, you can sort of tell that it's just a, you know, a block of white resin that's been painted, but uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool looking, and it came in a baggie with this header on top, so it's got custom artwork on there saying Jabba, and on the back, that's his logo, and it's one of one piece. I'll put his link in the uh, video description to his uh, Instagram page. Uh, as I say, this is, I don't think, something you can get right now, this exact one, but he does have other variations on this same mold that you could get, theoretically. Our last Jabba-related item today is this. This was uh, something that came as a complete surprise to me because I actually ordered this way back in May. I believe I ordered it on or about Star Wars Day. And it only just arrived like a couple weeks ago in October. So that's quite a lead time. I had forgotten that I even ordered it. Um, it comes from Creepies, who is a... Well, I mean, it's, I guess it's a husband and wife team that are from the UK. They um, make polymer clay figures like this one. So I guess they're all sort of individually made. Um, it is quite cute, and they're not super expensive or anything. But, you know, that's <laughs> quite a long time to wait. Still, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It does look a little different from the one that they showed on the website, I'll have to say. But they're both cute. So I'll put a link to this in the video description as well. All right, next up, we're, we're going to be veering away from the world of Star Wars for now uh, and into H.P. Lovecraft, which is also one of my great loves, uh, the, the Cthulhu mythos and so forth. This is actually a Sophobie figure, a soft vinyl figure. Uh, that Sophobie is what they call it in Japan. And uh, this particular one is from Japan, from uh, a maker called Marmot, or sometimes uh, Cars Works, I guess. It's sort of, I guess Cars Works is his uh, kind of personal brand, and then Marmot is sort of the overarching brand. A little confusing, but in any case, uh, he has made a lot of soft vinyl toys. This one is of the uh, Great Race of Yith, which, if you know anything about... H.P. Lovecraft, um, I mean, it's a little hard to sum up, but basically they're a race of aliens who live on a faraway planet, but they kind of uh, send their brains, or their, their their minds, I guess I should say, to the Earth and swap bodies with uh, humans so that uh, a human being occupies this body and they occupy the human body, and they, that's how they sort of travel the galaxy. It's it's a really good story. I like it a lot, um, and I really like how he's done this sculpt and everything. I can't quite even get it on screen all at once because it's uh, 12 inches tall. Relatively light, of course, because it's made of soft vinyl, but I really like this piece, uh, especially all the the color here. It's got lots of different colors blending into each other and the kind of trademark metallic paint that you see on a lot of soft vinyl figures. He has done uh, at least one other paint variation on this as well, but I like this one the best, so I was really uh, happy to see that he had added it back to his website. He makes them just in small batches, 
Uh, I'm not sure if he's making any more or not, but like uh, this one he had made five of and they sold out relatively quickly. Just thought I would show that off. For our next item, I want to take a, a bit of a 180 degree turn from what I normally handle on this channel and talk about an overweight, evil, galactic warlord. Wait a minute. Well, anyway, I want to talk about the Dune figures from 1984, the original Dune movie by David Lynch. Now, I'm a big fan of that movie, and I have been ever since I saw it when I was a teenager. Uh, it's very strange in certain places, but I really like just about everything about it. Uh, the acting, the sets, the props, the sound design, all of it, the effects, really cool stuff in my opinion, especially for the time. Uh, as a movie, it's not fantastic because they kind of crammed it into too little running time. They tried to get everything into one movie when really it probably should have been at the very minimum like a three-hour movie or maybe two movies like the new uh, Dune movie is going to be. So, you know, if you haven't seen it, I'd still recommend that you do it, but be warned that, <laughs> uh, you know, especially in terms of story, it's got some issues. But in any case, uh, I'm a big fan of that movie, but I've never had the toys from that movie. And yes, they did make action figures and other toys from the film. Uh, it may be hard to believe, especially if you've seen that movie, because there's some really messed up stuff in there from time to time. Uh, why they thought that they could make a Star Wars style toy line for that movie, I don't understand, but regardless, they did. LGN, LJN, rather, uh, made a, you know, a decent start on a comprehensive toy line for the film, although it was canceled fairly early on because the film itself didn't do well. Uh, in addition to action figures, they made things like coloring books and, uh, you know, party hats and napkins and oh man it's just crazy how that how much stuff they have for that but uh yeah I, I really would like to start sort of collect some of that stuff as well at the moment i sort of set myself a goal of getting all of the original figures by the time the new dune movie came out and i did manage to do that so let's take a look at them right now of course we have here uh baron harkonnen or harkonnen if you prefer from the new films that's how they pronounce it he is a very, let's say, uh, full-figured figure. These are really gigantic figures compared to, say, Star Wars figures. So here's my uh, hologram Luke, which just happened to be the one that I have closest to hand. You can see just how much bigger he is. And I didn't even actually realize that when I started buying these. I was surprised when I got them in the mail. They are so very large, but they also have a uh, an action feature, each of them. Generally, there's some kind of little lever in the back or on the side that will allow you to make the figure do something. In, in the case of the Baron here, basically he just <laughs> raises his arms up. I don't know if they were thinking because the Baron, of course, uh, floats in the film that maybe he would be flying like that. I don't know. I don't, unfortunately, have any of the accessories for these. They're rather expensive. Even just the raw, you know, figures on their own are on the expensive side these days, although if you are patient on eBay, you can get some decent deals, which is what I did. I've spent maybe over a month just patiently waiting for new auctions to come up, and uh, eventually I was able to get decent deals on most of these, 20 or $30 a piece. Um, so there's there's the Baron. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll go with this guy next. This is Stilgar, the Fremen. He's one of the good guys. I mean, sculpt-wise, it's not bad. I don't know why they decided to make his still suit in brown. I guess it kind of looks brown on film, but really it was kind of a dark gray or a black that's then dirtied up. So I think making it black would have been more appropriate personally. But much worse than that is the fact that they made this rope pink and black, which I don't really understand. I don't think that's accurate to the film, but I could be wrong. His action feature is just sort of doing that. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the deal is there. Uh, yeah, no comment. 
They only made two of the good guys. Most of these are bad guy figures for whatever reason. Uh, one of them, of course, is Fade. I believe he's the nephew of Baron Harkonnen. He's one of the other Harkonnens there. Uh, this is uh, played by Sting in the in the movie, so I have a little Sting action figure. His action feature is on the side. I'm not entirely sure how you're intended to use this, but I, he, he comes with a knife that you're supposed to, I think, put in one arm, or one hand, rather, and... Uh, you know, have him attack with it. He also came with a cat in a little cage, which I really wish I had. Uh, if you've seen the film, you know that plays a, a minor but memorable part of uh, of one sequence. And I think it's just hilarious that they made it into one of his accessories. Another Harkonnen we have is uh, this guy here. This is uh, Raban. He's much, much beefier. I, I, not entirely. Sure. I can't remember what his relationship with the Baron is, but uh, maybe sort of like second in command, essentially. I don't know if he's directly related to him or not. His action feature. Let's see if we can get him to do it. Some of these are a little stubborn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good action feature, right? Sure. He came with some sort of some sort of uh, mask and a gun, but unfortunately, I don't have those. I've thought about trying to maybe use three D printing to replicate them because trying to get the originals on their own is super expensive these days. Next up, we have what is maybe the hardest to find one. This was the Sardukar warrior, I guess he's called, sort of a stormtrooper type guy, the uh, Emperor's army. Basically wearing what looks like a welding mask, I guess, but in any case, his, so we can get his uh, action feature to work. There we go. I don't know what that's about. Looks like he's given some kind of uh, suspicious looking salute to me, but who knows. I guess that's appropriate, but I don't think that's what they were going for. Finally, we have Paul Atreides, who is the main guy, the main hero of the film. Although for some reason they gave him to us in his dress uniform, which we saw at the beginning of the film, and not the still suit, which we uh, saw him in later, which would have been a lot more appropriate for play. His action feature, aside from being blurry, is just sort of pivoting at the waist like that. So there he is. I got this one actually in relatively bad condition, but I uh, decided I would go ahead and touch up the paint on his head and his eyebrows. One of those was partially missing. I totally redid the hands and the, most of the boots. I've been watching a lot of uh, Toy Paloi videos, so I kind of channeled him a little bit, and it's surprisingly satisfying to kind of rescue a toy like that that's in bad condition, I'll have to say. Now, in addition to these uh, action figures, they also made some vehicles. They made a one very large vehicle that was in the uh, same scale as these figures. But they also had some smaller kind of mini-rig type uh, figures, or, or vehicles rather. And going along with that, they also made a sandworm, which may be the most memorable, aside from the Baron, maybe the most memorable uh, toy in this line, because, well, <laughs> for various reasons. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a distinctive shape, and uh, it's articulated, too. It's got an articulated tail here, and an articulated head, so you can kind of pose it in different ways However you like, it's got a flat area here that it kind of has to rest on. Although it won't, it won't stand up in every position. There, I got it. You kind of have to balance it out. But uh, yeah, I was happy to be able to get that for a decent price. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, I did recently just see the new movie, and it's quite good. Uh, of course, it's only half of the story, basically, so it's a little difficult to make a final judgment about it. But uh, if you're interested in seeing it, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I still have a soft spot in my heart for the original Dune, and for the books, for that matter. Although I haven't read them since I was probably in my 20s. Definitely, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of the whole Dune universe, so 
I'm really happy that they've come up with a new big budget version of it. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's worth going back and looking at what we had in the 80s as well. Thanks for watching. As always, this video is being brought to you with the help of my patrons from Patreon, including Angelica Brady and the rest of these Palace VIPs right here. If you'd like to learn how you could support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.